Another American uh, WNBA superstar, uh, Brittany Griner, is detailing her experience about her arrest and detainment in Russia. Griner spent 10 months behind bars in Russia after being sentenced to nine years in prison and later transferred to a Russian penal colony. U.S. officials say Griner was wrongfully detained in 2022 for vape cartridges in her luggage that contained less than one gram of medically prescribed cannabis oil. She was later released in a rare p prisoner swap between the U.S. and Russia. And now in a cable news exclusive, MSNBC host Joy Reid sp spoke with Greiner about her time in Russian captivity. You spent 293 days mm -hmm. um, in Russia, in captivity in Russia, in various places. What did you learn about yourself in that 293 days? Mm. I learned that I'm a little bit more resilient than I thought. Um, I was listening to all those stories Pops told me back in the day. You know, he used to work in the, work in the prison system as well. Uh, and, uh, you know, he would tell me stories about, you know, how certain inmates would treat him and how they, he would treat them with respect as well. So, I, you know, I definitely used that too. You know, I treated everybody with respect. Even though they don't know what I'm saying, yes, ma'am, no, ma'am, yes, yeah. sir, no, sir. Um, and you can see how they treat, some would treat you with the respect that you deserve as a human, and then sometimes it just didn't work. And Joy Reid joins us now. Joy, thank you so much for getting up early for us. We really appreciate it. <laughs> Of course. Good to Thank have you, you for on. having me, Mika. Oh, Thank you. Well, this is an amazing interview. I, I'm, I'm dying to hear what else you learned from Brittany Griner and, and how you think she's doing. You know, it, 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 it's amazing to um, just, and I'm glad that you started the way you did, Mika, because I think sometimes we in this country, particularly given our politics, um, tend to underestimate and undersell the perniciousness of that regime in Russia and what they're willing to do uh, and the ways in which they try to use Americans um, really to shore up and backstop the kind of core criminality of that regime. And they used Brittany Griner. Um, and once they knew they had her and she believes they targeted her deliberately, she was a pawn. She was a pawn in that politics, in Vladimir Putin's politics. And, and I think that what, you know, she took from that was, number one, of course, as she just said, her own strength and resilience. More than 200 days spent much of it in a gulag, freezing, having to cut off her hair, cut off her long dread because they were freezing uh, and she was freezing, um, having to navigate a world in which she did not speak the language and only really knew the country as a celebrity, not as somebody who really understood the culture. And so I think this was for her. It was hell. She still shows the visible trauma. Um, and one of the things that really broke my heart in talking to her, she still blames herself mm -hmm. um, and still, I think, has not given herself the grace that I think she deserves. Joy, good morning. Extraordinary interview and in there an extraordinary moment when Brittany talks about the moment she learned she finally would be released. Let's listen to that. Eventually you did get liberation. You mm -hmm. got freedom. Uh, talk about that moment when you realized a deal has been made. I was very happy. Very happy. I'll never forget Anne coming to get me from the prison or from my workshop and telling me like you're you're going home, like you're 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 leaving. I was thrilled, but then scared also because like it could fall apart at any moment. And then also happy because I'm like, okay, well maybe it's me and Paul's turn now. When I get on this plane, yeah. you know, hopefully we're both on this plane. Mm -hmm. um, you know, when Trevor uh, went home, you know, Paul wasn't able to go and. I wasn't able to go, uh, my trial was still going on, so I was really hopeful that everyone in Russia was going to be coming home. Joy, I'm struck by how often she mentions those who have not left yet. Paul Whelan, she continuously brought up um, yeah. his name over the course of your interview, reminding people, yes, she was freed, but there are still some left behind. 
Yeah, and in the in, in the back of the book, um, she lists all of the Americans who've been detained around the world, including those who've been detained in Russia, and writes a lot about the connections that the Whelan family and the Reed family and her family all made back home, all rooting for each other's freedom. This was not just about getting one person out. For all of them, it was about getting everyone out. And she's really um, thrown herself into this cause of freeing all of the Americans um, who have been left behind. And as she said, hoping that when she got on that plane, Paul Whelan would be on that plane as well. And it really does show you the, you know, the, the torment that these people are going through. Think about how long Paul Whelan has been there. And she went through, you know, years. You know, it is, it's to me sort of shocking to think about spending nearly a year far from home, wondering if you'll ever get out. Um, because she was sentenced to nine years, nine and a half years incarceration for what in this country would amount to nothing um, and for something that wasn't even deliberate. But I think the Putin regime understood that they had not just a, a black celebrity, a black queer celebrity, somebody who could be used internally as a pawn, somebody um, who they could sort of internally mock and hold hostage um, from the United States, knowing the trauma that it would cause back home. Joy Reid, thank you so much. We'll be watching the readout. Of course, we do tonight at 7 p.m. Eastern for part two of Joy's exclusive interview with Brittany Griner. And that's right here on MSNBC at 7 o'clock Eastern time. Joy, thank you so much.